Hi there, Trisha here. Um, I'm in the kitchen and I am going to process some of the carrots that we have. So these are the first ones that we're picking and I'm going to uh, freeze them. And so, yeah, they need some cutting up. They're a little bit gnarly, as in their shape, but the taste is incredible. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm cutting up the ends. And you see that some of the carrots here have green ends to them. Well, that's just because that was above the soil. Um, so, uh, yeah, just I just cut it off. Um, so I'm just kind of making some uh, coins, or I don't know what you call them, with them to, for my carrots. These bigger ones, though, however, I'm kind of cutting up in sticks. And uh, I'm going to do those separately, like for a different style of, of carrots to be used. So you can use pretty much all of the carrot and just take away some of the weird stuff and uh, you're never going to know it once they're cooked up and uh, on your plate. So they're still great carrots. I'm also um, doing some beans. So what I'm doing right now is I'm boiling some water on the stove. Uh, what we've done, what we did last night, is you can do when you're lounging in front of the television. So all the beans we have cut, cut up into portions. We've taken the ends off and cut them up. And then the bigger beans here we're going to put through this contraption which will make it into French beans and in Dutch we call it a snijmol and so it's a cut mill and uh, so I'll be using that on the larger beans um, later today so I've done one set of I've already blanched these beans so these were the purple beans and now when you blanch them they become green but they're a very dark green and they're really nice. So after I blanch them, then I take them off and I drain them and, and uh, rinse them with cold water to stop the blanching process. So now I'm going to um, put those in bags um, and I'll show you the process of that in a sec. Okay, so now the water's boiled. I'm going to take those cut beans and I'm just going to pop them into the water there. Whoa, steamy, steamy, steamy. Let's get you cleaned up. There we go. And I'll put a timer on. Once it starts boiling, I'll put the timer on for four minutes. And this is an induction stove that we got, so it should be pretty quick to boil. And so then they boil for about four minutes, and then I'll stick them in the, the colander and rinse them with the cold water. You can also do what they call a cold water, cold water bath. Um, so I could fill the sink with cold water and then just dump, dump it all in. Um, but the problem is, is I only have this little sink and if I dump the stuff in the cold water, all the hot water goes with it because I only have one sink. So it's better to just do it in the colander and then rinse it off. So. So here's all my beans cooled off. So now I can uh, start with some plastic bags. Actually, 
I'll show you what I do. This is me being Miss Frugal. Okay, I think our beans are boiling. So let me set the timer. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so, I say milk bags. In Ontario here, Ontario, Canada, our milk comes comes in cartons, but it also comes in bags of milk. And so I guess it does cut down on some plastic, although these are plastic bags. So I rinse them out thoroughly from the milk and let them dry. And then I use them for my beans or any other thing. So they're really thick plastic. They're even thicker than like your Ziploc bags. So they're, um, yeah, they're handy to reuse. And uh, I do that. So um, some may not, may get some comments about reusing and there may be milk stuff in there, but I thoroughly rinse them. So, and uh, I've been doing this for years <laughs> this way. So um, let me put you down and you can see what I'm doing here. Let me get the camera here. There we go. So there's three of us living here now, so I kind of will put it into probably three or four handfuls in a bag, and that will be one meal for us. And last year when we did our beans, um, there was just the two of us, but we ended up having about 50 bags of beans in the freezer and unfortunately oh, we still have some of those beans so um, yeah I don't want to uh, yeah so if our bean crop this year is not as vigorous because of the rabbits getting them that's okay because we have beans to finish from last year and we don't want to keep them too long um, a year or so is okay. Um, so, but I wouldn't want to keep them for longer than uh, going into this fall. So we'll have to be eating the, those beans before we get these ones. Now I've got a minute left on the cooked beans, or the, the blanching of the beans. And uh, so we'll be putting them. So yeah, it's always a thing to get your stuff it takes time to get your stuff, um, uh, yeah. Just blew my nose, so I should <coughs> wipe my hands. Um, yeah, so it always takes time to process your stuff in the garden, and that's uh, it's part of the, the process. So we've got to turn the timer off. And let's lift and put in the colander. Sorry, you guys can't see this, but this part. I'll turn the camera around. You can see that I've got in cold water. I'm actually going to give it a <clears throat> And this is very cold water. It's cold water from our well. I'm 
scooping each other underneath there. Okay then, they are rinsed. We'll just let them get the water drain from them and then I will continue to put them in the bags. So right now, so I've got some of these carrots done. So I will um, be blanching these carrots. Um, so again, probably takes maybe four minutes to do the blanching. Um, and uh, so these ones I kept the little small carrots and these ones were the ones I could cut into coins. Um, so anyways, I'll get the carrots going. Okay, back again. Um, now I'm ready to do what we call French beans. Um, so you can see this contraption here. I've attached it to our temporary counters, which I guess is glad we're Kind of glad that I can attach it to that and not uh, ruin anything. So, um, what you do is you put in the beans like this, and then you just turn it around and it goes in. They go in. Sometimes you gotta push it, which I can't do when I'm holding the camera. Um, Thanks, Ralph. So as you can see, they come through. Putting them in. Turning the handle. And then they go, and they come out. Let's see, get good camera angle, come out as. Beans. French cut beans. So that's the process of doing that and when I get enough of them I will blanch those as well. I probably will only blanch them for a couple minutes because they're a lot smaller so I don't want to fully cook the beans so I'll probably just do that for a couple minutes to blanch them. Anyways, I will continue with this work and see you later. So Trisha here again, um, I'm still doing beans, uh, so I'll show you what the French beans look like after they're blanched. So you can see that they're nicely cut, and this is the way that they look when they are raw. So those are the purple ones, and you see the blanching turns them totally green. So these will drain off, and I will put them in bags. And then I will continue um, doing the beans. I want to just say that this contraption here, it's actually a family heirloom. I'd say it was my father's, it was my grandmother's, and they used it. They, it's made in Holland, and they used it for their beans all the time. So... <clears throat> Um, one of my uncles used to call these French beans, uh, he used to call them uh, throat cutters. So he didn't quite like the, um, the way that French beans were cut and how sharp they were or whatever. So anyways, um, yeah, as kids, uh, I remember, you know, fond memories helping my mom and dad um, doing the beans. So as you can see, we would either be loading the beans, putting them in here like this and 
then one of our parents would be turning the wheel or we would turn the wheel and they would load because don't want little fingers getting caught in the uh, in inside there in the blade. So uh, it was mostly when we were older, but I've had my grandchildren um, help me by turning the wheel and then I'm loading the beams. So that's a that's a big help and it uh, it provides some great memories uh, working with your grandparents or your parents. And uh, so don't ask me where you can get one of these. I have no idea, but I would, yeah, you can probably look online and see if there's some available. Anyways, I'm going to continue cutting these beans and, uh, and then putting them, blanching them and putting them in bags. So I hope this was helpful with regards to um, yeah, doing, doing up beans from the garden. So we'll see you soon as I've got more produce to go. As you can see, lots of tomatoes to process as well. So I will probably be making sauce, I think, from these. Um, but my daughter-in-law has the saucer or the, the uh, processor to make it into sauce. So I will have to get that from her and then I can continue. So till then, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.